The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, What are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you? So we can give an answer to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, some of the Pharisees were sent also. They asked him, Why then do you baptize, if you are not the Christ or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal straps I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. We are in the third Sunday of Advent, Joyful Sunday as it's called. We're reminded of hope and joy, the joy and the hope of knowing Jesus Christ. I want to echo back earlier during the week when we celebrated the feast of Juan Diego and his encounter with Our Lady of Guadalupe. In 1531, on May 9th, Mary appeared to this Juan Diego in Mexico. This happened shortly after a great plague that covered all of Mexico, killing millions. Isn't that interesting? Fourteen years after the beginning of the Protestant Reformation. Three years before the reign of King Henry VIII, who would suppress the Roman Catholic Church and elevate the Church of England to the persecution of many Roman Catholic priests and faithful. This was a time when some statistics claim over five million Catholics were lost. Where's the joy? Our Lady appears now to Juan Diego. She sends him as her messenger to the bishop to make an appeal to build a church. She says to him, I ardently desire that a temple should be built. Finally, the bishop understands and sees the fog's cleared. And the fruit of this apparition would lead to the construction of a basilica. And this would be considered the hinge point of over 8 million souls converting to Catholicism. Isn't that fantastic? 
there is joy to be seen. St. John the Baptist tells the people of his time, I am a voice of one crying out in the desert. There's one mightier than I who you do not recognize. Joyful Sunday is a time to look at the good news, to wake up and recognize the presence and the power of Jesus Christ. We have had some foggy vision. I'm reminded of the steamy glasses from wearing masks. There's a clarity that's missing. We've lost sight of the joy of who we are and God's gift to us. We are body, soul, and spirit. That's how God made us. Because we have a soul created by God, we share immortality with Him, eternal life. We have that privilege. In other words, we are indestructible. We were designed to live forever. We have God's Spirit in us also. It's the movement of grace that compels even non-believers to wonder if God is there. And it compels atheists to wonder in suspicion about their beliefs. The Spirit of God in us is a disposition we have that orients us toward supernatural. And that word supernatural, what it really means is there is a natural creation, but we have the ability and what it takes to be above what is merely natural, beyond what is merely natural. We are supernatural. The spirit is man's desire to cling to life and gaze and wonder toward God. One of the places where that works itself out is when someone, say, has cancer and they're willing to go through months of chemotherapy because deep down inside we have this review, refusal to believe that we have to die. And although we may die a physical death, the fact is that we are not going to end but we are called to live forever. The fog comes from something that we are witnessing what could be called as an eclipse by Bishop Athanasius Schneider. It's an eclipse of the supernatural, an eclipse of the primacy of God, an eclipse of the vision of eternity, an eclipse of the primacy of grace in our lives that fills us and moves us to pine for heaven, an eclipse of an inner desire to pray and call out and ask for God to save us. An eclipse of the sacred, because nothing seems sacred anymore, even the tiniest of babies. An eclipse of the need for adoration. To have a humble recognition that we are not God. And the joy that can be found when we realize that we don't have to be. And there is one who can do it much greater than us. And he loves us and desires to care for us. We have allowed the glory of God to be traded for the glory of man. And that's the source of great darkness. Let me say that again. We've allowed the glory of God to be traded for the glory of man. And we see the fruits of how that works for us. We exalt the power of propaganda and we hold that as truth. 
while the media contributes to controlling our lives to a point where we don't even understand what truth is anymore. But there is a truth that Jesus Christ desires to give us his eternal life and invites us to share life with him in heaven. This is great joy. The fog continues as we place our trust in technology. Our faces have a propensity to be stuck in a screen and blind to our neighbor and blind to God. We, or, we adore the context of a screen instead of looking toward heaven or toward the Eucharist in adoration. We place our security in wealth and material things rather than seeking our security in things that are eternal, in eternal life, the communion of saints, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Trinity, and the vision of heaven. Our Blessed Mother entered the world as Our Lady of Guadalupe. Not the first time she would make an entrance, and definitely not the last. But the core of her message came to Juan Diego very simply. She said, It is my desire that a church be erected here so I can show and bestow my love, compassion, help, and protection to all who inhabit this land and to others who love me, that they might call upon and confide in me. Her desire is for us to turn to her son, the source of true joy. This is her desire. This might not be the popular trend of the world today, but indeed some of us know the truth, that this is what leads to eternal life, and the real joy. And so we, a city on a hill, a light shining in darkness, because of the grace, the light in us through baptism, we become the witnesses of the joy of heaven. The prophet Isaiah says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. That's from our baptism. We are full of grace because of this. Rejoice in the Lord. God is the joy of my soul. He has clothed me with the robe of salvation. This is who we are. Rejoice always, St. Paul tells us. In all circumstances, give thanks. This is why we come to Mass. The Eucharist means thanksgiving. It's the place where we come to adore and love our God. Some people say, you know, I don't come to Mass anymore because I don't get anything out of it. It's not about what we get out of it. It's what we give to Him in it. And so we have adoration where we commune with Him on Wednesdays all day. We need to be devoted to the rosary, to meditate on the mysteries that lead us to Christ. And one thing I'm happy to hear, there's been an uptake on confessions lately. If I was a used car salesman making $2,000 commission on each car, the amount of confessions, I'd be a millionaire right now. Praise you, Jesus. St. Paul says, may the God of peace make you perfectly holy, soul and body, preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Regina Jenny, letare, alleluia, qui aque menuisti portare, Resurrection, 
Thank you. 